Grace and Peace. Welcome to Greater Refuge Church right here in Henderson, North Carolina, on America Road, where my pastor is William T. Winston. We thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. Our Sunday school lesson coming from Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 1 and verse 4 through 15. But before we get started, we'd like to go into a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we bless you this morning. We praise you. We magnify and glorify your holy and righteous name, which you are God. You are Savior, our Redeemer, our soon coming King. You are sovereign God, all powerful and almighty, declaring our end in the beginning, Lord God, and all to you we owe. Lord God, we just thank you this morning for blessing us to be in your presence one more time. We thank you, Father, that you count us among the land of the living. We thank you, Lord God, for yet this opportunity of fellowship with the saints yet once again. Heavenly Father, we repent of our sins and our transgressions, and we ask you to forgive us, Lord God. Extend your grace and mercy that we forgive us of things we've done knowingly and things we've done unknowingly. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you right now to give us listening ears to hear with the Spirit we have to say to the church. And Father, as you, Lord God, give us your word, bless it that it will find a hiding place in our yes, hearts that we won't sin against you. We thank you, God, for being mindful of us, for having us on your mind this morning, Lord God, for giving us, Lord God, yet another day, Lord God, to get it right with you and, Lord God, to be a witness for you. We thank you and we bless you. We praise you and glorify and magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Once again, our scripture lesson this morning, we come from Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 1 and verses 4 through 15. This Jeremiah chapter 26. And we're going to talk about Jeremiah stand up to deadly threats. Jeremiah stands up to deadly threats. Jeremiah was one of the major prophets of the Old Testament of Israel that God used to um, give a word of correction, not just a word of correction, but a word of love, and that he um, gave them opportunity to repent of the sins that they had sinned against the Lord. And Jeremiah allowed the Lord to use him in that way. As I was reading the lesson this morning, it reminds me of so many people that I know that have said to me, God has given them a word of correction to give someone. And they were afraid to do it because they were afraid of the outcome. They were afraid of offending. But when God gives us something, a word to give someone else, we need to do it because it's for their soul. It's because God loved them so much. First of all, he loved us so much to even use us. And secondly, he loved them enough to give, to give them a chance to get it right with him, to repent of their sins and, and to um, get it right with him. And so we need to use that. But we need to do it with the spirit of humility, understanding that God can use anyone. It's not that we are so um, great or grand or important, got nothing to do with our titles or position. It's just got to do that God used the person who makes themselves available to him. And it should be a privilege and an honor. We shouldn't get so lifted up in pride that we think that we are doing anything in our own strength because the word God said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But it does not say that um, we are doing it in our own strength. It does not say we can do it the word of God. I'm hearing the man of God this morning as he was teaching and he was talking about the people of God, and he was just giving the word of God in Philippians, and he was just talking about how um, we should remember that the arm of flesh shall fail us. We will fail ourselves, and we can't, as saints of God, we should not live in the flesh, in this earthly realm, in our mindset, in the way we think, and the way we feel, and how things appear to us, but we should walk in the spirit. And one of the things to walk in the spirit is walking in humility, the spirit of meekness and love and kindness. And so um, Jeremiah allowed the Lord to use him with the spirit of humility. So we're going to go into the book of Jeremiah. First, we go, we're going to only go back to Jeremiah chapter number one. And it says, The word of Jeremiah, the son of Hekiah, of the priests that were in Ananoth and the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of 
of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. So Jeremiah just when somebody came up off the street, but he was of the son of a priest, the Benjamite. And God sent him to prophesy during the time of King Josiah. Josiah was well, a godly um, priest, a king. He was someone who sought to please God. He was someone who wanted to serve God. He, wanted, he made corrections to, to the people of God of Israel during that time period. Those have, because there were so many things that, that people had gotten away from that God had told them to do. There were so many things that people were doing that God had told them not to do. And so he was a godly king and he wanted to correct those things. And Jeremiah came during that time. But go down to verse number four. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, talking about Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and thou, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pour down and to destroy and to throw down and to build up. So right there is showing us that God has already ordained us before the world began. The Bible tells us that he declared our end in the beginning. Before we were even born, God declared where our end would be at. He declared it. He's, he called greatness, called us to speak people greatness. He called us to not just to greatness, but he called us to be greatness in him. And he let Jeremiah know, I call you, I sanctify you, I set you apart for me, for my purpose, for what I would have you to do. A prophet unto the nation. And so this is the thing about God is not only will he put you in a position, but he'll prepare you for that position. It's what we do with it while he's trying to prepare us. Because sometimes we don't like the process. God's not going to put you in a great in greatness or in a great position and you are not prepared for it or you don't want to listen to him. Or he'll put you there and then we can do like Satan did, become lifted up in pride. But God called us to a spirit of humility. To be unbefied before him. To be dependent on him. To serve him. To love him. He doesn't call us just to think that we can do anything in our flesh. And one of the biggest problems with Satan was that he started saying, I came by him and said, I will set my throne above the great, where above God. I'm going to be like the most I. I'm going to do. When we start saying I in any position, it doesn't matter if we are uh, janitor. If we start saying, now, this is mine, I am the janitor, that means nothing to God. What that shows is now we are walking in a fleshly realm, and we are walking out of the will of God because we are now walking in a spirit of pride. And the pride is something that will destroy, where God said, our people. It will destroy a nation. It will destroy a church. It will destroy us as a people of God. That word pride. That pride will kill us. And we got to be very careful in our servitude to God. To not to think that we can do anything of ourselves. But we need to seek God. We're going to go into our lesson. Going to chapter 26. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the, king, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, if ye will not hearken to me to walk in my law, which I have set before thee, to hearken to the words of my servants the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, then will I make this house like shallow, and make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. And we go back to the book of um, Deuteronomy during the reign of the time of, of Moses when he was um, the prophet and the leader that God said over the people of Israel bring them out of Egypt we find that God gave them laws, he gave them commandments he gave them um, 
a choice of where they would serve. You serve me and you are obedient to me, then I'm going to cause you to be great among the nations. Nations are going to have to call you blessed. I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to cause you to be blessed. You're going to be blessed when you come, blessed when you go. You're going to be blessed in this city and blessed in the field. You're going to be blessed and the people around you are going to fear you because they're going to understand that I am with you. But if you choose not to follow me, then you're going to be cursed with a curse. Everything that I have done to the nations around me, how I weeded them out so that you can possess their land, I'm going to weed you out. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to destroy you. Because I chose you out of all the people in the world. Not because you were so great, but I chose you. When I chose Abram, when you were few in number, I chose you to show forth my glory. So God, he made a covenant with the Israelites. And he told them what he expected from them. He told them what he expected them to do to obey him, to love him with all their hearts and all their souls and all their might. He expected them to be a light in them around the nations. So that people would glorify him. They would want to become their God because there was a he's heathenistic um, nation. And they were worshiping all kinds of idol gods. But God said, I'm the true and living God, so I'm going to place a nation that I'm going to be their God and the other's going to turn from the idol gods, and they're going to worship me. And so he chose the Israelites for that. And the Israelites, there were times when they um, deviated from God's um, word, and they deviated from his commandments, and they went about their own way. They served the gods of the land, and they, they um, half-heartedly served God. And so God would always send somebody against them, and they would have to cry out to God, because that's what God does. He's merciful. And so he, they were proud to God, and God would forgive them. They would repent. God would forgive them, and He would send a deliverer. It's the same way it is now with us. And we, we get out of the will of God, and we cry out to God because His grace and He's graceful and He's merciful. He will forgive us when we repent. And God wanted the Israelites this time, at the time of Jeremiah, before they went into bondage, He sent them a word through about His prophet because God will send a word. Where God said, God won't do nothing unless He reveals to His prophet. And that's why it's so important if God raised you up to be a prophet that you got to give the word of God without fear in your heart. And you got to give it the way that God gives it to you. You can't, you might step on people's toes, or you might make people upset, or whatever the case may be. But God does it for a reason. He wants them to repent and turn back. It's not his will where God said the enemy should perish. God don't want anyone to see destruction, their demise. He wants that to happen. He wants everyone to reign with him. But he also gives us a choice. But with his people, he will send a word of, of, of chastisement, a word of correction, so that they will repent. They will ask for his forgiveness, and they will turn back to him. And this is what he was doing. He sent a word by Jeremiah. This wasn't the first time he sent a word by Jeremiah, a word of correction. But he sent them a word. He told Jeremiah, he said, I'll need you to go take them a word, and I, because I want them to turn back to me. And he said, and if they don't, I'm going to do to them what I did to Shallow. And in Shallow, what he did was, Shallow was, was um, defeated. And they took, they took the um, Ark of the Covenant. And so now, God has said, and, uh, and the Ark of the Covenant represents God present. And God is saying, now this is what's going to happen. I'm going to send somebody in who's going to destroy you, and my presence is going to depart from you. Because it was not just about it being a piece of an uh, 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 Ark. Or something they made with hand. The ark of the covenant represented the presence of God. And so now he says, when they took the ark, they took the presence of God with them. So now God is saying, I'm going to talk to you on the level that you will understand me. Because you remember, it's been told to you of all the things that I did when Eli was the priest. And when his son was supposed to be a priest. And instead of them doing what I commissioned them to do, and the way I said, they did it their own way. And so when they went to battle, when I was not with them, they took my presence. They took the Ark of the Covenant, something you said represented my presence. They took it from you. And I wasn't there with you. I didn't dwell with you. And so he said, now I'm going to remove my presence from you if you do not repent and turn back to me. Because that's what God does. God will always send us a word of correction. And we don't have any reason not to know the will of God, man. We can cut on the TV and hear the word of God being taught, the word of God being preached. We can cut on our, our radio. We can cut on Facebook. We can always get the word of God. And not only that, 
We got the word of God ourselves. All we got to do is pick it up and read it. And the Bible is one of the cheapest books you can find. And you can buy it. Because they don't, they don't hold as much value as other stuff do. Because people don't want to live for God. The way they, they say it's supposed to do. But as with the Israelites during this time. As with Judah during this time. What was happening now was the people was half-heartedly serving God. Let's go to where it said. Now, so the priest um, said, so the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. They heard the prophet. They listened to the prophet giving the word. It was the priest was there, the prophets, the other prophets was there, and the people of God. Just imagine this. Close your eyes for a minute and just think about this. Being in a Sunday morning service and the priest the priests are there, the ministers are there, props are there, the praise worshipers are there, the musicians are there. Everybody's there. And then God sends a word of correction and say, listen, you're half-heartedly serving me. And I'm getting ready to send a correction to you. But I want you to repent. If you repent, it will repent for me that I ever did this. If to even think that I would do something. If you repent, repent. If you will say, you get on your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry, with a godly sorrow, not just half on it. Lord, I did it and I'm sorry. Acknowledging what you did was wrong. And then said, Lord, forgive me. Imagine it. They heard this. And it says, now, it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him, speaking to all the people, that the priests and the prophets of all them, all the people took him saying, Thou shalt show that. Get mad with the prophet. Get mad with the man of God because he's doing what God had told him to do. He's saying what God is saying to say. Because this is the thing about sin. And I remember my grandma just tell us, your sins will find you out. Your sins will find you out. Not only will they find you out, what she meant then was you can sin all you want, but you can't hide from God. And God will reveal it eventually. And when he reveals it to you, you can't do nothing but say, Lord, you, I'm sorry. If you really love God. Now, if you don't love God, you continue to be in denial. Because this is what was going on. This was the priests and the prophets and the people of God. Just like I said, imagine you being at church, in the sanctuary. You got the ministers there. You got the pastor there. You got the praise worshipers there. The musicians are there. The prophets are there. People are called that are half-heartedly serving God. And then God sending somebody a true prophet, somebody who's really serving him, and then they begin to say what God say. The people get mad. Because, you know, we don't get mad when um, when we are exposed. But this is a thing I learned a long time ago. Ain't nobody got to pull the sheet from over my head because God see it anyway. I can duck and dodge all I want. But God see it, and I can't hide from him. And you can't hide from him either. And this is the thing about God, and I love the word of God, where Jesus said, man look on the outward appearance. He said, but I know you. He said, you are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. In your heart, there are all kinds of things, fornicators, liars, murderers, you are cheating, you backbiters, you whisper. I'm looking on your heart. Because what we do is we hide behind the personification of being something that we are not. So the world sees us for what we try to betray to them. And God is saying the same thing he said to, to, the, um, to Judah then. He said, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I see you. They see you, in the, they see you up in the sanctuary reading the scriptures. They see you hiding behind your title of who you are. But a title don't make us who we are with God. No title will ever make us who we are with God. God told me a long time ago, titleship is one thing, but ownership is another thing. You can call yourself anything you want to call yourself, but if you don't own up to who you say you are, you are still nothing in my sight. There is no, God, the thing about God knows our hearts. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're going to do before we know what we're going to do. And so now, th these are the priests the people that's supposed to represent God, the ones that's supposed to go before God for the other people. These were the, um, the prophets, the ones supposed to have a relationship with God. And they were perpetrators. 
and they weren't allowing people. The people follows the leader. And this is one thing I tell people all the time. The people going to follow you, so if you do wrong, they're going to do wrong. It's just like with our body. The leader is the head. The pastor is the head. The shepherd is the head. So now if you think it wrong, the people going to think wrong. If you look at your body, when your body says, arm oh, lift up, it's going to lift up. If your mind don't tell your arm um, to lift up, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going to just move on its own. So the people follows the leader. So now the people see the indignation in the priests and the prophets concerning Jeremiah. And so now they are following that leadership. It said, what has thou prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, this house shall be like shallow, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitants? And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Because that's what had happened. People would turn against the true men and women of God to follow or be deceived by the, the um, people that are deceptive, who are who just like with, with um, Satan, third of the, of the angels went with him because he was so deceptive and, and, and he didn't serve God with his whole heart because he thought he was just like God. And that's where we get in our trouble when we start to thinking that we can do things of our own. Like God has told us to do something and then we do it our own way. That's half serving God. It doesn't matter about our worship. God, our obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what the word of God says. So now, if we're not obedient to God, it don't matter if we can um, quote the scriptures, quote the Bible. It don't matter if we can teach Sunday school. It don't matter if we can um, do praise and worship and sing hell and dad as we think. And it don't matter if we can play instruments. None of that matters to God if we're not obedient to him. Because the word of God says there are gifts without repentance. So you can do some things and never repent. And so it is so important for us to know that we serve a merciful God. And wherever position we find ourselves in, all we got to do is go to God and ask for forgiveness. And he'll forgive us. And he will um, turn us on the, next, on the road that he wants to be in. But because of our pride, once again, because we don't want to be humble. We think we can just do one. And they saying, um, all, he turned, all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. And when the prince of Judah heard these things, when then they came up from the king's house into the house of the Lord and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. They became so rowdy that the prince in the king's house had to come down to the sanctuary. It's just like us coming to church. We get so rowdy. The, the preacher trying to tell us what God said. And then we get so rowdy, we want to stone him. I've heard people put people out of church, had the police come out to the church. I'm saying, what kind of mess is that? God ain't in that. God ain't in that. God's not in that. God is not the author of confusion. God is not in it. God, and you can tell when God is in the midst of anything. Because when God is first and he's in the midst of it, there is no confusion. But when God is not in it, and we are all in it, when I, we put our flesh all in everything, then you got confusion. You got um, all kinds of mess going on. You got um, riots going on. You got so much stuff going on until you don't, God can't send people or souls to be saved. Because he's saying, I can't, they want to be saved. I can't put them in that because then they'll turn them against me too. And then they'll think, that this is the right way, and they'll be doing it wrong too. That's why we gotta be careful as the people of God. As the people of God, it's a light. The word of God says a light in a dark land. We gotta make sure we are lifting up the light. We gotta make sure we don't lose our Savior as the salt earlier. We gotta make sure that we are not perpetrators of the gospel of Christ, but we are standing on truth. And the only way you can know truth is to know God. You can't know. And this is the this is what was going on with the Israelites because there were some that knew the truth and there were some that knew the truth but they didn't want to do the truth. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. It's just like with us. We can read this Bible. We are know it. The word of God said, but being hearers and not doers of the word. Because what God said, we hold a greater condemnation. You don't know to do it and don't do it. We do. We worse off than somebody who worse than an infidel. We worse off than somebody who ain't never had a relationship with God. Never want to get saved. We worse than they are. Because now we become hypocrites and we are standing in the way of sinners. They're saying, that's why I don't want to get saved right there. That's why, because of that. Because of them. And God holds us accountable. And verse 11 said, Then spake the priests and the prophets and the princes and all, to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die. 
for he has prophesied against this city, and ye have heard with your ears. He didn't prophesy. He said what God said. I tell people every time when I say something, don't get mad with me. Don't get mad with me. If, if you don't like what I'm saying, and I'm saying the word of God, then get mad with the person who said the word. You ain't that brave. <laughs> you, you ain't that brave. You ain't that brave. We ain't that brave to openly, openly defy God. We ain't that brave. We cowards. So what we do is take it out on the person that brings the word from God. The person that brings the correction. The person that um, preached the word. The person that teaches. We take it out on them. We get mad with them. Because we, the word of God says, I have to kick you against the prick. We can't do nothing with God. We, there's nothing we can do with him. And said, so then spake Jeremiah to all the prince and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that ye have heard. He stood, stood on what God said. He said, I'm saying what God said. And that's why we can't be afraid to tell people um, what God says. Peter said it this way, it's better to obey God than obey man. It's better. Because somebody's soul is at stake, could be at stake. Somebody's life could be dependent on us saying what the word of God says, on us saying what God um, sent us to say, the way he says say it. Somebody's life could be hanging by a thread. And then what we do is we like to walk around on eggshells. No, you just say the word of God. I remember my former pastor. I didn't say the word of God. <laughs> you can't do nothing with the truth. The word of God says you can't do nothing with the truth. There's nothing you can do with the truth. Just give the, give the word of God well, the way God gave it to you. That what he tell you, say you said the way God say. Because, yes, when we are in sin, we're going to be offended. But if you've had the Holy Ghost, the offense comes from the Holy Ghost telling you, wait a minute. That's right. That's wrong. Don't get mad. Get right. Don't, don't get mad. Get in repentant mode. Repent. And ask God to forgive you so you can get it right. Simple as that. But we, like I said, we get offended because the Holy Ghost is saying, we start grieving the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost starts saying, oh my God, you got, did you hear that? You've been, you're doing this wrong. And the Holy Ghost is saying, you got to do this right. So we can't get mad with the person that's bringing correction from God. And it says 13, therefore now amend your ways and your doings. Your mind says, okay, so I'm saying what God says, so now let's fix this. And obey the voice of the Lord your God. Let's, let's fix this. What we did in the past, let's don't do that anymore. Let's get this right with God the way. Let's do it the way God says it has to be done. Let's do it the way that's pleasing unto God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. And God will forgive you. He won't, he won't destroy you. He sent them a word of correction because he's long-suffering toward us. He don't want us to fail. He don't want us to fall in the hand of the enemy. He don't want us to be destroyed. He doesn't want any of that for us. He wants us to get it right. So he sends the correction through the prophet. We've got to be careful with that too because everybody in the prophet, because they, they call it up, someone. But we got to make sure it's not a false prophet to listen to. But there is nobody, there is not a false prophet going to tell you that God said repent. You know, no false prophet going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them might get up there and tell you you're going to get a car or get a house <laughs> or you give a hundred dollars, you're going to get a million. Or if you give a thousand dollars, you can get two million. But a false prophet ain't giving it to you to repent because God um, is coming to bring judgment on your house. Mm -hmm. That's just God. And, and we know where our lives are at. We know where our relationship with God is at. He said, As for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as sing is good and meet unto you. He said, I'm going to stand on it and you just do what you got to do to me. And that's the mindset we got to have. Is as leaders as, as of God, as, as ministers, as teachers, as preachers, as pastors, we got to be like, I'm going to say what God say regardless. It doesn't matter who it is. Because one of the things that I know, we don't like to correct our own. We don't, we don't want to correct mom and them. Well, if mom and them wrong, mom and them wrong, they need to be corrected. They've got their soul too. We don't, we don't, we don't want to correct um, our children now. But, but if the children got a soul too, you think you love them more than God? That you, you can't correct them and tell them God ain't pleased? You think that 
I remember one day I was at work, my mother called me, and she said, I told one of your sisters this, that, and the other. And I said, Mother, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. She said, she said, I don't know if she liked it. She asked me, did she say anything? She said, no, she didn't say anything back. But I told her, I said, you did the right thing. Because you don't love her more than God do. The word of God said, God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. He sent, not us. His son came to die for us. We couldn't die for our children so that they can make, have them go back and relationship with God. We couldn't do that. We, didn't, we wasn't righteous enough. We wasn't holy enough. We didn't have right. I said, we need somebody to die for us. And I said, Mother, you did the right thing. And that's the thing we have to say. So we got to take corrections even to our house. We want salvation to come to our house. Okay, then the first thing we got to do is get it right at our house. That's the first thing we got to do. And the 15 says, But know ye for certain that if you put me to death, you shall bring innocent blood upon yourself. And upon this city, and upon the inhabitants thereof. For of a truth, the Lord has sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Jeremiah said, If you want to kill me, kill me. But notice you kill an innocent man. Innocent blood is being shed at your, at, at, at your hand. Because you, first of all, you're not believing what God has said. He's sending you something to give you life, He's giving you something to keep you from, from feeling His wrath. And that's what we got to do. I, a lot of people now, they, they preach in prosperity, and there's nothing wrong with prosperity. I'd be one of the first people to say it. I love you all. I'm messing about prosperity. And, and they, they preaching all kinds of stuff. But at this hour, at this hour, with this Delta virus taking people out of here, this COVID is taking people out of here, and people killing people, taking them out of here, and all kinds of stuff going on. At this hour, we need to be talking about repentance. We need to be telling people, repent. Repent. Be baptized for the remission of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We need to be telling people, turn back to Christ. Turn to God. Turn your heart over to God. At this, at this hour, what is going on with your soul? Is your soul right with Christ? People tell me, would you pray for me? The first thing I say is, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. And Lord, their soul belongs to you. Make sure it's well with their soul. Because I don't know what every relationship with God is at. We don't know that. But we want to make sure they're so. We do our part, which is to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, tell them about being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, but tell them about repentance, telling them about receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. We got to make sure that we do our part. And our part might not always be the good part, but we say, and God's going to bless you with that job, or God's going to bless you with that new car, or God can give you that increase, that promotion, or God going to do this for you, God, it may not be that problem. We got to make sure we hear with clarity what the Lord is saying, and then we got to make sure, make certain that we say what he says, say, and say it the way he said, don't fix it up, don't take from it, and don't add to it. We got to give him the word of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord God. Father, we ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, to forgive us of our sins and our transgressions. We haven't done it all right, Father. In the name of Jesus, we haven't lifted up the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we got to be honest. We take accountability for ourselves this day, God. And we ask you to forgive us and help us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Forgive us and help us to turn towards you, Father. Turn out of the world, Lord God, where it's so easy for us to dwell there. But God, we know that you got a better place for us to reign at. And so, God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, not just forgive us, but, Father, help us, Lord God, and lead us and guide us into all truth, Father. In the name of Jesus, that we will hear your voice and we will be obedient to it. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord God. We bid you guys grace and peace. Join us right here at 10 o'clock where the word of God will be coming forth. Grace and peace.